What things do you unfortunately know from experience? You cannot love someone into loving you. Likewise, your jealousy won't keep someone from cheating if they really want to. If they can't decide if they want to date you or someone else, take yourself out of the equation. Don't make someone a priority if you're only an option. Apostrophe. Never co-sign for a friend. Never co-sign for anyone. I've co-signed for two things in my life. One for a friend and one for my dad. I had to pay for both in the end. Do you want to sign a third? Never combine bleach and ammonia. Sure everyone knows that. But as a kid, I just made a mental note to not combine flasks labeled bleach and ammonia when hanging out in a lab. Skip to young adult years, I'm working in a vet clinic, and what do I spray into a litter box with Tom Catpus in it? Well it was extra stinky, so I skipped the chlorohex and went for the bleach spray of course. I was also in a tiny little room with a tub but no ventilation. It was like breathing in gas that ignited in my throat. Lesson learned. I believe the combo creates chlorine gas which is pretty damn dangerous. This is a common misconception. It's not chlorine gas. It's trichloramine. Smells similar. But it's not as toxic as actual chlorine gas. That said. I wouldn't want to inhale either of them. Other fun fact. When measuring ammonia. Many techniques use something called the Berthelid reaction. It specifically requires adding chlorine to ammonia. Not everyone has family or even parents who love them. People always assume everyone does. This. And no person ever needs to forgive the shit their parents did. Or lack doing simply because t-h-e-r-e-y-o-u-r-p-r-e-n-t-s. Eater. Damn guys. Thanks for the awards and thank you so much for all the comments and sharing your stories. I have always been well aware that my story is not a singular type occurrence. And as a parent myself, that kills me to think about. I hope you all are managing and healing and living the best lives possible for you. And I had one commenter saying that forgiveness is a part of healing. And that is true. I've forgiven my parents a long time ago. But it was for me that I did that. Not for them. Because I did not want to be angry or carry that on my shoulders to weigh me down my whole life. Yeah. The real world has consequences. And sometimes a consequence of someone abusing or neglecting you is that they no longer get to be a part of your life. Cause and effect. They aren't exempt from that just because they're family. Stress impacts not only your mental health, but your physical health too. Every time finals week rolls around the acne flares up. Back pain gets bad. And my bowels go crazy. For me it's the stomach problems and my face noticeably gets thinner. Always keep your mouth closed when cleaning the toilet with a toilet brush. I do this all the time because I'm just scared. Never experienced it. Just dark foreseeing. You have something a lot of people lack. Common sense. The term fireproof is always relative. Nothing tragic or anything. Let's just say if you're getting into metalwork don't cheap out on your PPE. Aluminum will run like water. And just like water, if it pours on you, it will find all the gaps and holes in your clothes. Luckily it's so hot that it doesn't hurt until it starts to heal. Backslash luckily it's so hot that it doesn't hurt until it starts to heal. That hurts to read. Good. That means your eyes are healing. Because you've never used them before. When you get hungry. Sometimes you're not actually hungry. Now this one is pretty interesting. So apparently our brains don't know the difference between thirst and hunger so many of the times you get thirsty your brain will send signs of hunger when you actually just need some water. It's worse than that. Sometimes you're not hungry, you're just bored, or you just want to feel different than you do at that moment. When I quit drinking last year, my intake of sugar and caffeine shot through the roof. Only lend money you don't mind losing. Yeah I gave $400 to a friend once because they begged me for it so they wouldn't be thrown out of their house. I never saw him again. Best $400 I have ever spent. He was always a mutual with no money and I knew I wasn't getting it back when I gave it to him. I did something similar with a Kaoka. He was the best thing since sliced bread if you asked him and wouldn't shut up. $100 later and all I had to do was mention the money to send him scurrying away. It's not what you know, 
it's a you know, is not just a trite saying. Very much this. If you have no solid connections, you're not necessarily totally screwed, but at a severe disadvantage. I gave an older lady a job when I was hiring manager for a big project. When we got laid off, we both found other gigs. Over a year later, laid off again. Guess who got me another job? Don't burn bridges and help folks when you can. That shit comes around both ways. Holding on to anger only poisons you. When you're hurt and backed into a corner suddenly everyone becomes an enemy. Anger and depression go hand in hand. That some people are just going to be assholes. No matter what. Thinking back. Sometimes those people are me. Yes. And sometimes. Just sometimes it helps to be the asshole not the receiver of ashillery. Amen to that. Took me a while to learn this one. Money doesn't mix with friends or family. Never give someone money that you aren't willing to burn. It can mix. But don't make it a loan. Make it a gift. If the other person demurs at the idea of a gift rather than a loan. Say, I know you would do the same thing for me. Apostrophe. That's the correct answer. Friends who owe you money will generally stop being friends. Not because they are bad people or anything. It's just the sad reality that if they are in a position that they need to borrow from friends, they are unlikely to be in a position to repay their friends. If you ask for the money back, it'll create stress and they will end up trying to avoid you. And even if you never ask for it, they may feel guilty about owing you and will avoid you. Loans between friends and family suck. Either give it as a gift or not at all. I'll enter close family member 14k and change for a new car because they were in an accident and needed it as soon as possible. I was assured they had money coming in, which I knew she did, so I didn't really even think twice. The excuses started and it took years to be paid back and I was paid back in such small installment it hardly felt like I was paid back at all. Finally, her mother paid me the remainder and that's the last time I'll lend money to family. I had previously lent her some money and was paid back immediately. So just because someone does the right thing once doesn't mean they won't try and screw you later. Just because someone hasn't broken up with you or clings to the relationship doesn't mean they really want to be with you. Sometimes you have to break your own heart to get out of an unpleasant situation. Right. So fucked up. I feel like some people can want to not hurt your feelings. But by doing so they just make it worse because they can't be honest and say they aren't happy. Pretty sure in the Mike Burbidgelia movie Sleep Walk With Me or another he does he talks about how him and his partner stayed together for years. Just because neither one wanted to hurt the other and end it. Here it is. HTTPS slash slash www. Youtube. Com slash watch. V equals V4 VZQSFX9 knock. Took 3 seconds. I can totally promise it's not a recrawl. I forgot what there's something in psychology that talks about this. It's not only not wanting to hurt the other person, but it's also when you reach a certain point you start to think that it would be a huge waste to break up BC of all the time and effort you put into it. Then you get stuck in that cycle and it can almost be never ending. Something about profit loss I don't remember. Sunk cost fallacy? Even though. Just because you end a relationship doesn't mean it was all a waste. Even when it ends acrimoniously. Those moments of happiness and the odd adventure are worth something. Being lonely can make you think and act in ways that will only perpetuate the problem. If not make it worse. How do you solve that? Short answer, be friendly and open. Don't expect people to approach you, but don't come on strong. Or expect relationships to build and solidify quickly. Let people get to know you in their own time. Long answer. The best way to stop being lonely is to act like someone who isn't lonely. This is the real fake it till you make it. Sadly, nothing is a bigger social repellent than loneliness. People don't want to take on your emotional baggage when they barely know you. And people don't want to feel like they are interesting to you purely based on the fact that they are better than nothing. So you need to get out there and meet people. But as if you already have a basically completely full life and are willing to make some space for them. And when people are friendly to you and make overtures, say yes, but don't overdo it. These overtures likely mean they are somewhat interested in getting to know you better. 
not in interviewing you to immediately to be their new best friend or love of their life. Remind yourself to take things slow. Pursue your personal interests. Join a writing workshop. Take a language class. Learn how to throw a pot. Learn how to tap dance. If you have time be lonely. You likely have a lot of time on your hands. Use it. Activities doing what you love are good for the soul. Keep you busy and with a full life. And you will meet people with common interests this way. It also makes you way more interesting when you meet other new people. Initiate plans with the friends you already have. Don't feel bad about always being the initiator with people. Most people are pretty self-centered and kind of glide through life reacting to stuff. Rather than being proactive. When your friends don't call you. It's not because they don't care. It's likely because they aren't thinking as far ahead as you are. And aren't thinking about that much other than themselves. Or maybe their immediate nuclear family. And don't look down on being the initiator. It's a great characteristic to have and develop. Initiators are why relationships last. Also, having plans with existing friends makes it easier to make new ones because inviting new people along is flattering to them and takes the pressure off the social interaction. Don't ignore slash excuse red flags. Yup. Don't make excuses for someone else or forgive them repeatedly. People are perfectly aware of what they are doing. And by forgiving them, you let them take advantage of you. Yes. Exactly. Letting someone convince me they didn't know any better is one of the most foolish things I have ever done. Nope. You can forgive someone and still never trust them again. Those are two entirely different concepts. You do not decide if you pet the goat. The goat decides if you pet the goat. Ever gotten headbutt in the thigh by a goat? It's all fun and games when you are wrestling until it pulls one of those on you hahaha. <laughs> never turn your back on the ocean or a goat. The baby goat in front of you is only a lure to make you bend down, so the baby goat behind you can jump on your back and tear out your hair with its teeth. It's illegal to ship food from Australia to South Korea. Thankfully the post office worker made sure to check what I was shipping, or I could have ended up in serious trouble.